Good evening. Um, I called to order the November meeting of the Florence City Planning Commission, and uh, as I always do, I thank all of y'all for being here tonight. That's on behalf of the commissioners here uh, and the city staff. Um, it means a lot to us to have y'all participate in these um, these meetings. Um, as I always say, it's the city um, and the people's business. So. Thank you for being here. Um, I'll get right to the agenda. We have several things on here and, um, tonight, so I usually try to start exactly at 6 o'clock, so I'm a little off that. Um, the um, next item, or the first item on the agenda is invocation, and I'm going to ask Mr. Moses if he would uh, um, handle that for us. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we want to thank you one more time for giving all the blessings that you did. You didn't have to wake us up this morning, but you did. You gave us the breath of life. You give life in everyone that's here today. That we all should be thankful for what we're doing. We are thankful for what we're doing for the cities of Florence. We thank you for all the blessings that you give us. Lord, we know that we pray everywhere, but we don't get the opportunity for the kids to pray in school. Let us think about it sometime. Maybe be a blessing that we should start doing something. Talk to the people and let them know. Prayer bring changes. The other blessed yes in your name. Amen. Amen. Excellent, Mr. Moses. Thank you very much. Um, approval of minutes. Um, the commissioners received their packet and have had a chance to go through um, the minutes of last month. And uh, if there are no changes, corrections, um, or additions, I, I call for a motion. So moved. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion, a second to approve as submitted. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Like signs, nay. The ayes have it. All right. Um, Ms. Elaine, you're up tonight. Um, we have PC 2022-33. This is a request to zone RG-2 pending annexation. The former Palms Golf Course and specifically identified as a portion of Florence County Tax Map Number 75101049. Staff report, please, and good evening. Good evening. This will probably look fairly familiar to you. This is a continuation of the annexation request of um, Lake Oakdale and the Palms Golf Course, formerly known as the Oakdale Golf Course, off of um, Pine Needles Road and Stratton Drive. Back in 2021, the Planning Commission approved the annexation of the north side of Lake Oakdale, and that's shown in blue on the map that you can see. And um, the request has now come through to annex the remainder of the golf course, which is shown in kind of the peachy color on there. And um, so that is the uh, lake, north part of the lake um, was approved by y'all, but did not go through um, city council. It's not taken to city council. So at this time, we're going to we'd like to take the whole thing together as a group package for city council approval. So it'll be the north side of the lake, which you've already approved and zoned um, open space and recreation, and then this portion for uh, a single family subdivision, which would be zoned um, RG2. So this is a closer up uh, look of it look at it. Um, the zoning around it is open space and recreation for the other half of the lake um, and then the neighborhood to the east of it is zoned NC-15. Um, and the properties in the county are unzoned or zoned R1 for single family residential as well. And the um, it was designated as parks and open space in the future land use mark map but that was when it was designated as a golf course everything around it is for neighborhood conservation so this would be an appropriate um, use for it based on the surrounding land use the rg2 designation um, provides for a certain amount of open space depending on the size of the lots and um, we haven't seen a sketch plan or anything really yet, an official one, but they will be single family homes on smaller lots with some open space and um, to just accommodate the area 
so that it'll fit in with the character of the remaining neighborhood. And the developer is here if you have any questions. Um, so that concludes staff's report. Um, Mr. Lane, can you share with me or maybe the developer why it was not put in front of city council when we approved it? I don't remember the, they just withdrew it and decided, I think they were just wanted to wait until they could carry the rest of it and carry it all together as a one package. Okay. Uh, any questions from the commissioners for staff? All right. Um, at this point, with no questions, I'll open the public hearing uh, portion of this meeting. Um, what I'd like to do, if there's anyone here that like, would like to speak against uh, this request, I'll have um, that group come forward first. And then um, anyone that is in favor or has submitted uh, application for this to come up uh, after that. Is there, um, we'd, we'd like to kind of keep things uh, in order, if you would like to come forward, you have to come to the podium. We'd love for you to request that you give us your name, and uh, we'd like to limit it to three or four minutes. Um, we know that there are some circumstances where it may go a little longer. Um, I would like for um, anyone that gets up to address the commission and not address uh, anyone in the audience, uh, and there'll be no talking uh, in the audience while it's going on or at any time without. Um, uh, permission from chair. All right. Is there anyone that would like to uh, come forward and speak against this request? Okay. Yes, ma'am. If you give us your name, please. My name is Dolores Pace. I've lived in the area for 45 years, and I am not fully understanding what's going on so i just want to ask for this meeting is it a routine time for this to be done because this is an election day i had several residences that wanted to come but they're busy with the election things that are going on and we're not able to come so is there a certain time that this meetings are done that this could be put to a time when more people can come well that is a very refreshing uh, question um, could you spell your last name for me? P is in Paul, A is in Apple, C is in Charlie, E is in Edward. That wasn't the first time you've ever done that. No, sir, it is, and I've been a paint and a page before. <laughs> okay, Ms. Page, thank you for coming forward. I, I will tell you that that is something that's completely out of the commissioner's hands, and we also are, are not discouraged, but question why we would have this meeting. Um, there are opportunities to vote early, and I'm not defending why it's tonight. Um, there are opportunities to vote early, and um, the, the polls open at 7 o'clock this morning. Um, I admire the workers that you um, referenced to. Uh, they play a special part in uh, the, the way this system works. So that would be the only thing that even um, early voting or voting at 7 o'clock that would not solve their issue if they're still working at the polls. So I would, uh, I love this part. I would love to have you either talk with um, the mayor, talk, you can start with the, um, the planning department and let them kind of take it up the ladder or you can call the city manager and uh, explain that to him. But um, it does put a burden and, and I, and I appreciate you coming forward to speak on that. So um, is there anyone, any commissioner that would like to add to that or make a recommendation? Well, Ms. Pace? Yes, sir. Thank you very much for coming You're forward. Welcome. Thank you, Commissioner. All right. Is there anyone that would like to speak against um, this request? Hearing none, I will now say that if anyone would like to come forward and speak in favor uh, or has made the application, if you would like to come forward, you're not required. Uh, Tony Moore, I'm the developer, one of the developers, my dad. Uh, you asked us a while ago about why didn't we. Yeah. We deferred it, but we're trying to get all the lots to figure out how many lots we could get and the plan to take to the castle. And instead of, we didn't have anything ready, 
and they kept deferring it. Instead of keeping deferring it, we went ahead and took it off the agenda. Uh, so it'd be a lot easier, like cleaner, neater to go ahead and take it off instead of keep deferring it. Um, we're looking at 178 rough plots, uh, walking trails, uh, wet areas, ponds. I think on the paperwork it shows all the path. So that was one of the complaints we've had when we did the first golf, first phases was we lost our walking trails. Uh, but when it was a golf course, but when the golf course closed, all that went away. So we're going to have some more walking trails in that area. Make it a lot more of a green. I think with, with uh, talking to Clint, we needed more walking trails, walkways. So we're going to put that more into that next phase. Excellent. Um, and then I know we talked about, one of the questions we had before the meeting was the people that living in the county, how would that affect them? And I think Clint can speak on that. We understood that's not going to affect them at all. Is that correct? Yeah, so we um, we always like to remind folks that unless you petition to annex, uh, you will you will remain in the county. Uh, you won't will not see any uh, increase in your taxes or anything like that. So uh, again, unless you petition to annex, come come up to the planning department and make that petition. Uh, that won't occur. We have also had a few questions regarding the water and sewer in this area, and uh, this uh, this project will help the. the the water in that area uh, if there are any uh, previous uh, concerns with that. So uh, with this development, you know, more looping of the lines, things like that, it will uh, help that situation. So, I saw in our packet that the developers adding the water and sewer to their costs. That's right. All right. Um, any other questions of Mr. Moore or, you know, um, Mr. M Moore? <laughs> <laughs> I had to look at my nose. So. <laughs> I got one. I got, I got something. Okay, yes, sir. And bring it back to my join me back again. There was a dam on this property, am I right? Yes, a lake, yes. And uh, we asked one time, I know who would be responsible if we have something occur on the, in that, that dam situation. We're actually, the lake's lowered right now to get repaired. We're working along with the lake association, and we just spent like eighty, one my thousand dollars to get it for DA came and inspected, and then now that we're completed, once DA officially says you've done all the work that the dam needs to be done, then we're going to give it to the lake association. So they'll the forest, the Oak, Lake Oakdale Association will own the lake or own the own the dam. Okay. So the city will have no responsibility for that dam done at all. It'll be owned by the uh, Lake Oakdale. Lake Association. Okay. All right. Any other questions, Mr. Moore? Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else that'd like to come forward uh, in favor? Uh, hearing none, I'll close the public hearing portion of this, and um, I'll ask the commissioners any any further questions of staff. What were the um were there any other zoning designations considered? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. I think it says that the um, Unified Development Ordinance will only permit RG2 and OSR zonings uh, in that area. And the request is for RG2, if I'm correct. Yeah. yeah. And that matches up with R1 that in the county? The lots will be a little bit smaller. But it, it, can, it only permits, they're only doing the single family. Yeah. That's right. They're, um, and only permitted to do the same. Based on the sketch plans that we've seen, there will there'll only be single family in this area, although the RG2 would be a smaller lot size than the surrounding area, or the predominant surrounding area. There are some, some smaller lots that are newly developed in, in that area. Um, but the um, the they're also preserving, based on the sketch plans we've seen that'll, that'll follow this pretty closely, um, they're preserving a fair amount of green area to, to achieve those smaller lot sizes. So, right. so with the smaller lot sizes will come the walking trails and the stormwater features and more and more of this space. Is there any apartments or condos there now? Anywhere in that area? There are some, um, not apartments or condos, but I believe there's some town homes that uh, type structures that, that are on some little cul-de-sacs that go down towards the lake. Um, they're they're down towards where the old country club were. There are a few of those. Yes. So there are some smaller, 
different types of housing in that area. All right, no further questions, and I'll call for a motion. Motion to approve. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. second. I have a motion and a second to approve. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, I'll uh, call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Like signs nay, and the ayes have it unanimously. Thank you very much. All right, um, next item is PC 2022-35. This is a request to zone CG pending annexation. Oh, excuse me, 34. 34. Thank you. Uh, this is a request to approve amendments to the design guidelines for the downtown Florence. Um, staff report, please. All right, this is a little bit unusual. Yes. Um, the design review board has brought to staff's attention that there were some outdated aspects of the design guidelines that they wanted to update, uh, specifically some cost thresholds for doing administrative certificates of appropriateness, um, and then there were some concerns with security measures being taken, and then there's also a concern about or, um, application fees, and there's been a rash of people doing work on historic houses or houses in historic neighborhoods um, that was not sanctioned by the design review board and then basically they're coming back and asking for forgiveness and then they would have to approve it whether they were really happy with it or not. So these uh, amendments they proposed um, are kind of addressing those concerns and the ordinance requires that these amendments be brought to the planning commission and then to city council. So the first one comes from the unified development ordinance itself and is just talking about uh, total cost, the cost threshold for which um, administrative certificates of appropriateness can be issued. And this was written in, I think it was 2005, and it said that the threshold then was $5,000. And as you know, cost of materials and everything else has gone up significantly. So they uh, decided that 15000 was more realistic of a threshold. Um, then the other thing was de dealing with security, and they wanted to add to um, the ordinance or the design guidelines were rather vague about adding security bars to buildings in the downtown. And we had one structure add those, and we really didn't have the uh, ordinance um, where we could deny that. And so we're going to reword it so that in order to avoid the implication of blight, Roll down solid or mesh window and door covers are not allowed in the overlay districts, and we're changing from just the historic district to all the overlay districts. Um, lighting of display windows in the evening hours deters crime. Interior security measures and windows and doors do not require board review. So if they wanted to put bar bars on the inside of the windows, we really couldn't say anything about that. But metal security grills finished in dark colors, um, right now it says they're allowed on windows to the side and rear, but they wanted to change it so that they could be permitted with board approval on rear windows and doors only. So um, just to try to keep the implication of blight. And then dealing with the application fee, um, the standard application fee for the design review board is $100, and this is all being added to it. Uh, prior to the work being done, if the work has already been started or completed without a certificate of appropriateness, the project must be reviewed by the design review board and the application fee is $200. Any completed work not approved by the board will be subject to removal, replacement, or correction to meet the intent of the design guidelines. So um, that gives them a little more teeth and also makes it a little punitive for people who go ahead and do the work without checking with us first. And we're also going to look into advertising that a little bit more so people are aware of, um, especially the people that live in Timrod Park. We have little bit of trouble with that. So those, um, and then again, just adding the comments about the uh, security grills on the rear um, to another portion of the guidelines. So those are the three main changes that we're, they're requesting. So um, that concludes the staff's report. Thank you, Ms. Lane. I didn't realize that the $5,000 fee was from 2005. I, I certainly can I was just wondering if the 15,000 kind of falls in line with other uh, cities our size. Are they higher? I mean, can well, we, we came up with that number by um, some of the people on the board who are in that business saying that cost of materials kind of has tripled, so we decided to triple okay. that. Thank you. Makes sense. Uh, any questions for staff? 
How, how are you going to address if you pass this in overlay district? The people that's already got the the metal or accordion. It'll be grandfathered in, for lack of a better word. But this would be going forward. Just one person has it. Okay, this this structure you're talking about. Oh is, yes, yes. What was your question, Doctor? Uh, somebody's already got this, so they're they're doing oh, this yeah. about the accordion gates or the, the yeah. They the, put um, down security. Well, no, they put security grills over the outside of their windows. It's the liquor store on East Palmetto Street, and. Um, so they, we couldn't find a way. They put it up without getting a certificate of appropriateness, without getting approval, and we really couldn't, didn't have a way to stop them from doing it or stop anyone else from doing it in the future. So that's why they wanted to add those, that verbiage to it. Excellent. So. Any further questions? So, so the, oh, the, this board is telling everybody that you can put up a steel door on your own, on your own place? No. Place? they. Just, um, you can't have roll down doors in, on, in the overlay districts. Um, you could put up a steel door if it's a decorative door and has been approved by the board. They just want to be able to review these things instead of people just putting it up and they want to make sure that it is appropriate for the historic districts. It's, it's, it's not like a garage door, like a metal door. It's like, a, um, you, you know, when you have like a a window to a front, like in a downtown, but they roll the big oh, oh. grates down over the We're window. We're not talking about opening the closed door. That's right, what, right. That, no, 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 that's no. what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, just talking. a security. Oh, okay. These are the okay. security okay. Okay. grates, like the bars yes. they put over windows or the roll down doors. Gotcha. Yeah. No, I got you. But, but they did allow them to put them on the inside. Okay. Um, the, mm -hmm. the, those treatments would be allowed on the inside if they so desire, but not on the exterior. Oh, you're talking about roll down doors. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. And like security a bar city or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You say steal your door. Up. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. Any further questions? And then uh, when it came to the rear, the, uh, tell me about that. The rear windows and doors. Like if they wanted to put bars on those rear windows and doors, they would probably be allowed to, but it would require review by the Design Review Board. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, I will open the public hearing portion of this. Again, you know how we work this. If anyone is against uh, this change, um, you're welcome to come forward. Seeing none, if anyone is for this, but would still like to come forward and support it. Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing portion of this and call for a motion. Move we approve. A motion? Second. Second. Is that here? Okay, thank you. I have a motion and a second to approve as submitted. Is there any discussion? <clears throat> Hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Like signs nay, and the ayes have it unanimously. Now I'm on track. Okay, PC 2022-34. I um, just did that one. 2022-35 <laughs> is a request for zone to CG. Ms. Elaine. This is another annexation. It is located at the corner of, uh, well, the intersection of South Church, Pamplico, and East Siesta Drive. There's a portion of that area that's already <coughs> in the city limits, and then the lots next to it um, that are in front of Compassion Church. And then there's a Pelican Snowball, I believe it is, on one of those lots. They want to annex the portion of the Compassion Church lot and then the other two smaller lots into the city limits and then combine it with that larger parcel that is already in the city limits. And the purpose is for a commercial development, a couple of restaurants and some uh, retail space. So um, everything around it is zoned uh, general commercial and that's the, commercial, the zoning designation they are requesting. And the future land use map, um, because of the church, it uh, says it's public and institutional, but everything around it is commercial. So here's some pictures of it, um, and then the plat, possible plat for combining those portions of the lot together. And um, the overgrown section in the top picture is the lot that's already in the city limits, and then they'll just be combining all of these together and tearing down the um, 
those two small buildings and combining it all into one. So that concludes staff support. Thank you. Uh, any questions? All right. Um, I'll open the public hearing portion of this again. If you would like to speak for or against this, you're welcome to come forward. I will close the public hearing, having no takers, uh, and call for a motion. So moved. Second. Motion second to approve. Any discussion? Hearing none, I'll uh, call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, like signs, nay. All right. Uh, the next items do not require a public hearing. Um, PC 2022-36. This is a sketch plan um, request. Staff report, please, and good evening. Good evening, everyone. So the next three cases are all sketch plans that have been previously approved. Um, our ordinance in line with state code gives uh, two years of vested rights after approval is granted for a sketch plan to move on and get development plan approval and construction begins or uh, the applicant re can request on a yearly basis to renew that approval up to seven years. So this protects the applicant from changing codes and um, whether that be state codes, city codes, uh, they can lock in that approval. Uh, on the flip side, this allows the city to put a fresh set of eyes on previously approved plans that have um, reached that sunset and need to get reapproval. So what we're doing with the next three sketch plans is just putting fresh eyes on previously approved plans. Uh, so the first one up will be uh, Spring Haven, phases six and seven. Uh, this was initially approved by Planning Commission August 13th of 2019. So this is a continuation of um, the Spring Haven subdivision. Uh, this is off of House Springs Road. And this, these phases six and seven will include um, McCracken Drive will continue and Sturkey Drive will continue to loop around providing access. It is zoned RG3, so this will be uh, this will continue to be residential. These will be single-family homes. So th this will be developed as RG3 uh, conventional single-family homes, uh, average lot size of 6,000 square feet. Uh, a minimum lot width of 60 feet and it goes over the, the setbacks that will need to be met. Uh, here's the sketch plan. I printed it out so that the plan commission could see it a little bit easier. So what we have proposed uh, in phase 6, uh, 35 lots. Uh, phase 7, 39 lots. Uh, you can see on the location map, it kind of shows you an overall of where these phases are compared to previously approved phases. Uh, water and sewer service are available to the property. This, it will also follow under the city's jurisdiction for stormwater. Uh, following sketch plan approval, a uh, full development plan submittal package will have to be approved by staff before construction can take place. and. Uh, this sketch plan is in agreement and in compliance with our unified development ordinance. So that does conclude staff's report. Thank you. Questions? Can, can you tell me uh, the, the phases? Is that on the sketch plan, the phases that you mentioned? Uh, yes, sir. If you look under site summary, uh, it will show phase six. Well, it's the total of 74 lots. Uh, phase six will be 35 lots, and that would be above the dashed line. There's a dashed line that runs under lot 47, 48, 49. Right. And then anything below that would be phase seven. And phase seven was how many? It would be 39 lots. 
And these would all be single family homes meeting these minimum lot widths and these uh, setbacks for the RG3 zoning designation. What lot numbers are coming in? Which What's the first phase? It's like phase six. Give me the lot numbers. Oh, okay. Yes, sir. It appears that phase six would start with lot number 33 and run to... Let's see, 46, 60. Yeah, that's right. It is 60. Thank you, sir. Any further questions? Are these meet the turnaround requirements for the? It will have the loop uh, built in uh, from Sturkey Drive as well as McCracken. Uh, so, yes, sir, there will be a uh, turnaround radius will be met for fire services, emergency services. Um, that was a great question, and, and um, I'd, I'd like to, um, Mr. Keith, let him know because one of the difficult jobs we have is when we look at these sketch plan approvals, they've already been through um, city engineering um, for approvals. They've discussed and approved it through um, the fire department, police. Um, we as a layman uh, look at this and you know it's kind of say well yeah we we have a problem with this this and this but we are assured every time that staff has already gotten approvals and, um, like dr lohorn asked are there turnarounds are there enough exits out of these um, drawings or plans developments uh, to meet all the requirements and um, again, as laymen, we have to count on the staff to have gotten those approvals um, because this is kind of uncomfortable being fairly new in the commission. And you look at this and you say, well, my gosh, you know, what kind of questions do I ask and how can I give my vote for something I don't <coughs> totally understand? It's, it's one of the tasks of this commission and we go on the good faith of um, the, the planning department. Uh, but I like questions, and so I want to encourage those. Um, and I just share that with you because we'll be doing a lot of these in the, in the coming years, hopefully, as you serve with us. Look forward to it. All right. Uh, any further questions of staff? Uh, hearing none, I'll call for a motion. Move to approve. I have a motion. I have a second. Second. A motion, second to approve. Any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Like signs nay, and it is approved. All right. Um, Mr. Johnson, you're up next right. for the second sketch plan. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right, this is Easy Living at the Grove. This is a continuation of a planned development district, uh, the Grove at Ebenezer. Uh, planned development district uh, is approved by city council and they will lock in their own uh, zoning ordinances, uses, uh, things of that nature. So in the Grove, it's based on the previous zoning ordinance and that document that was approved by city, or, uh, city council May 9th of 2016. So this is a continuation of that. Um, and this phase will be 6.8 acres. And the subdivision is being developed as single family homes. So here's a little bit closer view. Uh, it will kind of butt up to uh, South Ebenezer Road and use some of the existing infrastructure within the Grove for connection. And it is zoned Plan Development District. All right, so here is the sketch plan that was previously approved. Uh, May 14th, 2019, it was previously approved. So this is going to be uh, 24 lots, uh, essentially this, this cul-de-sac, uh, single family homes. The lot area is uh, 3,000 uh, square feet minimum, lot width of 40, uh, and it has to meet the, uh, the building setbacks listed there. Um, so water and sewer service is available to the property. Again, it falls under city stormwater. Um, one of the things that's uh, different about this sketch plan is, like I said, it does butt up to 
um, Ebenezer Road so the developer and the engineer in the city um, have uh, they've put in place a, a buffer yard to protect citizens from road uh, traffic noise and also from these becoming through lots where you know Ebenezer Road people would have driveways off of Ebenezer Road instead of using the approved thoroughfare um, they could just become through lots uh, so they will be required to put in a type C buffer yard along Ebenezer Road and that that will be 25 feet in width and it does include these trees uh, listed uh, in the unified development ordinance so three canopy trees three understory trees three evergreen 30 shrubs and that's per 100 linear feet uh, following sketch plan approval uh, again this will have to go through development plan and um, city staff um, believes that this sketch plan is com in compliance with the Grove at Ebenezer Plan Development District and any city regulations that it would fall under. So that does conclude staff's report. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Just for um, education purposes, I know there have been issues as far as a single point of ingress, egress, and I guess that's based on the number of homes. Um, that's and correct. then secondly, the distance from the entrance to the cul-de-sac um, is that I'm sure that meets code. Do you know what those distances are? I do know that once you get past 30 lots, you need a second access point. Um, and this proposal is for uh, 24 lots on this cul-de-sac. Um, off the top of my head, I'm not sure the maximum uh, for a cul-de-sac uh, to meet uh, emergency services. But I know it was reviewed uh, by engineering recently and at the time that it was approved uh, back in 2019. Thank you very yes, much. Uh, any questions for staff? Dr. Uh, well, Bob, what's the, I'm, I'm just going to, I know he knows. What, what is the, I'm sorry, Bob, what is the, what is the actual size of the cul de sac? I, I know you know that. It meets the um, fire department standards. It's big enough. Big. Over 100 feet. 100 feet, I got you. All right. Yeah. I, I did have a comment. If it's okay. Yes, please. Yeah, go, ahead. Back. go ahead and uh, Sorry. introduce yourself. I'm Bob Weaver, an engineer. Um, Philip Lowe is busy with um, politics tonight, so he's not here. But um, this is not approved under the UDO ordinance, okay? This was approved as a put prior to the UDO ordinance. So the Type C buffer does not apply here. It was not required in the previous move. I want to make sure that's clear. We we preserve all the trees we can. We had, this is a pecan tree orchard, okay? So we're, Philip and I got together and we decided which trees could stay, make sure we could keep all the trees. And my plans are at the city with the trees designated that we're gonna save. We're not touching any magnolia trees, which provide the buffer around this development. So we want to be sure everyone knows that. We also have some oak trees along on Ebony's Road that we're, we're not touching there in that existing 25 foot PUD buffer. We'd like to keep that buffer, and Clinton, correct me if, if I'm wrong, but we could always add to the buffer, but we can't take anything out of the buffer, and we don't want to take anything out of it. So we are going to add some trees to the lots as the builder builds the houses. Um, if we see some space in the back where we need to put some more trees, we can put them, but we, we won't want this approved that we have to put in a type C buffer and disturb what we already have. I, I, if I'm off, you can tell me. Yeah. The, the, uh, so, uh, 20, 20, 20, 20, 2016, we approved the uh, development plan and uh, agreement with the plan development for this, and part of that, there was a a buffer plan that was approved with that and, and uh, so the new uh, this requirement of the current buffer yard is within the unified development ordinance and will not be applied to to this project because it was approved under the previous zoning ordinance thank you um, thank you mr. Weaver all right um, no further questions I'll call for a motion motion approved Second. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve. Uh, any discussion? 
Hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Like signs nay. The ayes have it. I'd like to say one thing, Mr. Weaver. I'm glad to keep those pecan trees. All right. Next fifth plan. Okay, and finally, uh, this is Elizabeth Village. This will be phases two, three, and four. Uh, previously, this has been known as Pleasant Valley Townhomes and also uh, Chandler Crest Townhomes. Uh, with a new owner, new name, uh, this will be Elizabeth Village Townhomes. So this was actually approved by Florence County Municipal Planning Commission back in, uh, in Florence City Council uh, in 2007. So this one has been on the books for a while. We actually have a summary plat recorded of um, this development for 125 lots total. 124 lots uh, for 124 units and then one parcel which is common space to be shared among the residents. So this is off of Alligator Road and as you can see the first phase is near completion. They have one more building to construct. Uh, it's under construction now. And it will be three units. And then that first phase will be completely built out. And this is also a planned development district. So here is the sketch plan uh, showing the different phasing. Uh, so these are townhome units. Uh, they all the utilities interior to the development are privately owned so water sewer um, storm water infrastructure will and roads will all be maintained by the HOA uh, so phase one nearly complete is uh, 37 units uh, phase two is proposed to be 30 units phase three 30 units phase four 27 units Uh, so each uh, these will include uh, their three attached townhome units. Uh, the two outside units have garages. Uh, the middle unit will have a, a large driveway, but all units will have uh, two parking spaces. Um, and they will consist of three and two bedroom townhomes. Uh, so city water is provided through a single master meter from a water line on Alligator Road. And as you can see, it does have two access points off of Alligator Road and everything interior is HOA owned. Um, and again, this will have to go through development plan before construction and uh, the sketch plan is in compliance with the Elizabeth Village Townhomes uh, Plan Development District Ordinance. And that concludes staff's report. Any questions? You said that the water is completely owned by HOA. You have individual meters or? Right, yeah, it's, a, or it's got a master meter, um, and then it feeds into the units. But everything internal is owned by the HOA past that meter. So, so the HOA pays one water bill and just manages, manages the utility as like a mini utility? Right, right. I believe it's all tied into HOA fees. Hmm. Further hmm. questions? Hearing none, I'll call for a motion. Move we approve. I have a second. Second. I have a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion? My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll call for the vote. Uh, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Like signs and nay. <laughs> all right. Um, Mr. Moses, this is where you do your magic. Staff has done that I have, I have one item. Oh, no. <laughs> Real quick. Well, I normally do, but they don't normally do. <laughs> you go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. I do have one announcement to make. Um, is that there's been some um, management changes uh, within the city, and as part of that, there, um, I 
am going to be moving out to the utilities division or department. So I will be the utilities director beginning next week. Um, in my stead, Clint Moore will be stepping up as, in, as the planning director. And I'm also over uh, recreation services and community services as well. And Scotty Davis will be handling those two departments. So, and uh, Michael Hemingway, who is the current utilities director, will be the director of the long range planning and project management for the utility. Um, and he will be also uh, dealing with the economic development side of the utility. So it's been a little little change in, in operations. It's a, uh, I think it's an experiment that's going to last at least a year. So uh, I, won't, I won't be attending uh, too many of the planning commission meetings for at least a year. So. Oh, Mr. Dutter, let me say that you have helped this commission grow tremendously. And we have enjoyed your, your leadership. And uh, we also know uh, Mr. Moore. He has played a big role in that as well. And it's kind of a... Um, it's an easy transition because Mr. Moore has participated in so much, but I do want you to recognize, I want to recognize the fact that you, you have helped us mature and grow it uh, as a commission, and thank you very much for your participation. And uh, Mr. Moore, fun times coming. <laughs> <laughs> and thank y'all, y'all have been great. great. All right, question. thank you. I have a question. Okay, so what you said you can be over again? Utilities department. Okay, because Micah used to be over the... Utility. Utilities. 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 Okay. And he'll so, still be part of that. There'll just be two divisions. Okay. So, if I see a street with... We already reported to Michael that it's a busted line somewhere. And I know that it haven't been attended to up yet, so who shall I call? You, you got my number. <laughs> okay, and I'll call right. you. I got a question about my water bill. <laughs> That's utility finance. <laughs> <laughs> you got you. Oh. Okay, you got All right, well, um, Mr. Moses, now you can do your magic. I make the motion be a jerk. Yeah. All those except, say aye. Aye. Thank you. I got to get his number again. So, so you say you're a cops also? Yeah.